Hey, good evening guys. Um, so the reason I'm joining you tonight is to talk to you about Red Fawn. Um, I don't have a lot of information personally, but I've been exceedingly blessed to be able to interview both of her sisters. So I have with me tonight, I have Red Dawn and I also have Arrow. So as you guys are coming in, you're going to see there's a fundraiser link at the top. I'd ask you just to go straight to that and click on that. There's also a website that you can check out, which is simply freeredfawn.com. If someone would write that into the comments now out of the 585 people that are with us right now, that, that would be amazing. If you're sharing this out as well, that would be perfect. What I'm going to do is now introduce you to Red Dawn. <laughs> Foster, na Arrow Woman Banks, Imacha P. Um, Chante Washte, na Pechi Yuzape. Hello, relatives. My name is Red Dawn Foster, and this is my sister, Arrow Woman Banks. Um, we are gracious to gracious to be here and have the time to speak with you. We're coming to you today to talk to you about our little sister, Red Fawn, on October 27th. She was arrested and she is accused of first, first degree murder. She was on the front line helping water protectors, elders and youth who had been sprayed with mace on the front lines that day in her camp, which was the treaty camp, 1851 treaty camp that was also on the front lines, was raided and dismantled. You had grandmas and grandpas pulled out of sweat lodge while they're in, during ceremony, pulled out and arrested and you, they wrote numbers on their arms, and then later when they were taken to the jail with the numbers on their arms, they were forced to strip down and had, you know, searched, and then they would put them in dog cages. And during that time, we kept looking for our little sister because we had heard that she was, she was arrested, and I came in on that Thursday and looked and kept searching and calling places and trying to find her, and we could get no information. And then Saturday, we had been given some information that she was on a bus back and that we're like okay finally relief you know we'll see her and then we'll find out what happened and so we waited she didn't come back and it wasn't until monday that we were informed that not only was she still arrested but that she was being charged with attempted murder and you know you can imagine what our hearts felt like you know, this is our beautiful little sister who is so strong and so powerful and has been here at Standing Rock this whole time, you know, helping and teaching elders, working with the youth, and just now is charged with this outrageous thing when that's so far from what she represents. And so now we're here talking to everybody to get the word out to say, you know, free Red Pond, we want her back. She is Standing Rock's political prisoner. And this is just what we've been working on this whole time. Yeah, <clears throat> we know that she's been targeted. Um, she was such a strong um, leader among the youth. And, you know, we know that this is an action that is led by our youth. And, you know, we're just um, proud of our little sister and glad that she was able to take on that responsibility. And um, she came here in honor of um, our aunt, Trylin Yellowwood, and she had passed away in July. So she had sent out a calling um, asking people to come with her, come to Standing Rock, stand with us in, in prayer and solidarity. and. Um, and I remember her for days asking people to come. So, so she came, so we followed her. We um, you know, kept in touch with her. She would come visit us um, occasionally to um, get supplies and you know, always um, telling us about how that they're there in prayer. They're always there in prayer. It's not, it's not like, there's nothing that um, is portrayed, portrayed like by the mainstream media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. Let me ask you, just for everyone that's joining right now, we're talking about Red Fawn. She's Standing Rock's political prisoner. I'm with her sisters, Red Dawn and Arrow right now. And they're talking about her arrest. She's been arrested on attempted murder. She was arrested on October 27. 27th when North Camp was cleared and she's been sat in jail ever since. Yeah. On that night, 
The people that were arrested were written on with marker and put into dog kennels as less than human beings. So the reason we're here tonight is it's time to get their sister home. Can I ask you, where, where are you guys from? Um, we are from, we're Ogallalas. We're Ogallala and I'm Navajo. And we're from Pine Ridge. So she's from, originally from Pine Ridge, but she's lived most of her life in Denver. So she's... And, and we were, and we've been, um, my dad is Dennis Banks and my mom is Angie uh, Begay, now Angie Janice, and um, Joy Lynn Yellowwood, she was an active member of the American Indian Movement, as mm -hmm. well as um, our, my aunt, Teresa, and so we all grew up um, being a part of the, Amer the movement, you know, st standing up and for all of our rights, for Native American rights. And, but <clears throat> I think that's when I talked to her, I told her, um, I said, it's kind of weird how everything that we've been through, through from when we were little girls to up till now. And she told me that, you know what, sister? She said, everything that we've gone through and everything that we learned brought us to this point. And she said, don't worry about me. She said, I'm strong. I know, I know what I did is right. I'm innocent. And we know that she's, she's a good role model. I mean, you know, we, we look up to her as our little sister and we're proud of her for everything that she's done. You know, it's hard to see the videos of her being brutally, you know, attacked and beaten by police officers shot three times by rubber bullets and we weren't there to be able to help her but you're here now we're here now you you're, know, you're here, now, here now and you're helping her know that we'll we'll stand here for her and we'll do whatever we can to get all the awareness we can and you know get our little sister back back with us and back here protecting and standing up for the, the water. Awesome. Let, let me ask you, with, we've got about 1,500 people watching right now. Everyone who's watching, I'd like you to share this. If you can, make a donation. We're looking to raise 100000 for her bail money. $110,000. $110,000 is what her bail money is set at. Yes, you guys can go to red phone, freeredphone.com. That's free red phone. Dot com. Mm -hmm. And you're right, this is the same place, the uh, people saying they originate from the same place of wounded knee. This is the, the mistakes of the past being repeated yet again, history being repeated again, and then being persecuted. So, what I'd ask you guys, please share this video. And also, what other things can they do? I know I heard there's a call to action tomorrow. What can people do tomorrow to show their support for Red Fawn? So tomorrow is her arraignment hearing in Mandan, and so we're asking that please, please come, come, show your support for Red. If you are in the area, to show solidarity support for Red Fawn. If you are not, you can um, go to freeredfawn.com, go to the page, sign the petition saying bring home to Red Fawn immediately. Again, donate to the legal fund um, because we're looking at a minimum $100,000 for the bell and then you know outrageous amounts of legal fees because we have she ha she's strong she has faith in her innocence and we have we know she's innocent but i don't trust the system and like you said this is just like history repeating itself from wounded knee our my father her father was at wounded knee Choylin yellow yellowwood red fawn's mother was a big part of Wounded Knee. So it is not by accident that she was targeted. You know, Red Fun, Errol, myself, all of all indigenous people here, we were born into a legacy of struggle and resistance. And Red Fun embodies that and understands that, has it in her heart and her mind, and that's what she's been doing this whole time, is just sharing that information. Actually, I just see a comment on there regarding um People are asking what she did, and people are commenting about she shot police. Um, can you can you explain what what the charge uh, is? Why it's attempted murder? Okay. So what? Um, and there's video out there that will show. 
So what she is being charged with is um, attempted murder because she was working on the front line helping as a medic. As a medic. <clears throat> She's helping elderly people and youth who had been sprayed with mace. And so she was coming and bringing them back and cleaning their face and getting, making sure that the rubber bullets that they were hit with and in the head and the arms that the, that injury didn't need more, you know, more serious attention. And and also it's important to um, let people know that she was an active um, leader, and so I think that she was. I mean, she was obviously recognized by the police, and you know, definitely felt. I mean, I feel like she was a threat to them, and so they actually, um, I, I targeted her. Yeah. So after they had, um, go ahead. So yeah, so she was identified, and she was walking, you know, helping people, and there's eyewitness accounts of this as well as video footage. She was nowhere near the front line, and cops grabbed her and pulled her back, and then they just pummeled her, and then. They, sh I, I, you can see the her close range, um, with rubber bullets, and now they're alleging that she fired shots. And um, in in the the report, it says two Pennington County police officers and grabbed her and pulled her back, and for suspicious behavior. And I guess you know helping elders that had been maced and other youth and people with injuries is considered suspicious behavior in, mm. you know, in this county, so. Um. Absolutely, I don't mean to stop you. There's a lot of people on here talking about video of her with a the gun. There is no such video. The only people with guns out there are the police. The water protectors are peaceful. They are unarmed. She has been set up. There are people that have stood at her side at that time who are eyewitness to what happened. So I do appreciate Mandan's finest coming on here and, and adding to conversation um but as we say everything is going to come out everything's going to be shown with the court case but for now what we need to do is ensure that red fawn can be released and brought back to her sisters so let's get that hundred thousand hundred and ten thousand dollars raised tonight there's seventeen hundred of you on here right now i'm almost certain this live feed is being messed around with because there's not many people as usual um, so what I'm going to ask you to do, everyone on here right now, if you can share it, I'm going to be reaching out to some networks like Anonymous. I'm going to be reaching out to some networks like the, the, uh, the Young Turks, Collective Re uh, Evolution. I'm going to be looking at a lot of the uh, conscious collective of uh, media to make sure this message gets out there tonight. So, guys, the more that you can help push, push this out, the better. Um, you know, there's someone here saying, I watched as a policeman behind her struggle with her hand. He had his hand... He had his gun drawn. I thought he was going to shoot one of his own. She was grabbed without any weaponry near her body without having been near the front lines. So, guys, don't get involved in the comments with the trolls, please. Just let them burn themselves out. If you add fuel to the fire, it burns longer. If you don't put any fuel, the fire goes out all on its own. And, um, and also, please um, sign the petition. Where um, can they find the petition? Freefond.com. Sign the petition. Donate to the legal fund and learn more about the case. And, and share. Please and share, share. Share. So we can spread the word. And do you have some t-shirts? Can you show me one of those yes. t-shirts? And can I have one of those t-shirts? Yes. That's, this is for you. Oh, uh, look at this. So this is the t-shirt that's going to be worn. It says, free red fawn. If you drink water, she stands for you. One heart, one mind, one prayer. And our brother is the one who um, this is, made these the, the logo and this um, um, so it just represents just you know our family and our family struggles that everything that she's you know embodies and really absolutely I'm going to read that again just hold it up again because apparently it broke up we'll do it until it stops breaking up <coughs> free red fawn if you drink water she stands for you one heart one mind one prayer so guys this is this is if you're just joining is about Standing Rock's political prisoner red fawn who has been in jail on attempted murder charges that are trumped up charges. She's been there since the 27th of October. They're looking to raise $110,000 for her bail to get her out of jail and back to her family because on that time, her sisters were explaining earlier that they came to look for her and couldn't find her. They couldn't find her in any of the jails. And it took them a couple of days to get back in contact with their own sister. How old is Red Fawn? Thirty 
And she's been she's been supporting me as well. So guys, thank you so much. It's amazing, and thank you so much. I'm proud to wear that. That's it. Good evening. Bye.